that's when I asked my friend, I said, hey, are you still engaged with that really ugly woman? And he said, no, no, not not engaged to her anymore. And I said, oh, what happened? And he said, well, she's my wife now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Hello there. <laughs> Hello. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us once again to this, the 119th episode of the Drunk Doctor Who podcast. Where yep. We discuss the... 119th serial of Doctor Who, Woo-hoo. Kinda. We Looks kinda, like kinda, but it's pronounced Kinda. So we're going to kind of be talking about right. Doctor Who today. I'm Hatter, this is Holden, uh, and today uh, what are you I am today. I don't have a, a name to be today. Carmen yeah. Electra, have I said that one yet? Oh uh, yeah, be today William Shatner. Shatner. There you go. <laughs> but you have to talk like yeah. him. Captain Slog. <laughs> right, what are you drinking today? Well, today I'm drinking uh, Red Apple Air. Yeah. Hey, I am drinking Rumplemints. 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 Yes. Um, do right. you like Rumplemints foreskin? Rumpel still skin? What is it called? <laughs> <laughs> the drink is Rumplemints. Uh, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not going. I'm not that drunk, <laughs> sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Mm. So. This one was a very bizarre series. Yes, very bizarre. Very Wheel of Time. Yes. Dune-ish. Dune, Vinny Gesserit, yeah, uh, Matriarchal Society. To be fair, Dune had been written before this. Wheel of Time had not been written before this. Mm-hmm. So, uh, this is post-Dune, but mm-hmm. pre-Wheel of Time. Just to be fair to the source material. Yeah. Alright. Okay, um... Really weird cereal. I can't decide if it's really bad, really good. I, I'm starting to think the latter, but it's really, uh, really bizarre. Really bizarre. It's very Alice in Wonderlandish. If it weren't for like the poor costumes and set, I think it would have been a really it's part of the bad <laughs> solid. Yeah, cereal. But but then you throw in a giant stuffed snake, paper mache snake. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it starts okay. to. Alright, so there's only one death in the entire serial. We think. Well, no, I think it's a death. I, I mean, the knowledge is passed I, I, on I like a lot of Benny Jesuit. Camera does a death. Alright, okay, so let's get the first thing out of the way. So, too violent for right. Australia. No. Four episodes uh, aired from the 1st of February 1982 to the 9th of February 1982. Remember that it was airing on Mondays and Tuesdays. There were four episodes, so the first and second, and the next week, the eighth and the ninth, uh, for this entire season. Companions are Tegan, Nissa, barely, barely yeah. and Hadrick, the antagonist of the Mara, and what's his craziness? Uh, Hindle? Hindle, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Hindle's pretty much an antagonist for the vast majority of it. I'm, I'm gonna put him on there. He's, uh, so what? Drove him mad in the first place. <laughs> the trees. We don't really know. I he mean, just went kind of crazy yeah. before the thing that made everyone crazy happened. <laughs> well, he was he was uh, he was missing at least one out of the six pack at the beginning, and by the end of it, he's missing mm-hmm. four out of the six pack. Yeah. Um, all right. There's about three different stories in here, and they're all interwoven in a really strange way. Right, yeah. We we basically replaced Nessa as a companion with Dr. Todd. What kind of filled that campaign? Mm, well, no, that? she doesn't exactly because they already have the companions. But, but yeah, to be fair, it starts out, there's um, Adric and Nissa playing checkers. Uh, mm-hmm. British would call it draughts, uh, but checkers. And Tegan and Draught. Draughts. D R A U G H T S. Checkers. Checkers. All right. They're playing, they're playing checkers. You know that that's what they call football? What? Gridiron. It's a great name for football. Gridiron is a classic name for the football field here in the States. Yeah, and in, in uh, UK, they call the sport gridiron. Oh, I don't know that. Uh, Which makes more sense than football, but football, I think. Well, they call their football is soccer. Yeah, football. But, it's, it's funny because we get the word soccer from the British, which is short for associated football. Mm-hmm. All right. And anyway. they call their football gridiron, which I think 
No, they call their they they call their football football. They call it soccer football. Like they, they call, colloquially known as gridiron. They just call it gridiron instead of football. Okay, at least as far as I'm aware. I have no bloody idea. All right, so so anyway, at the very beginning, Nissa passed out at the end of the last episode, right? She right, she passed out at the end of the last episode. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. she passed out at the end of the last episode, uh, last serial, and. Um, Adric's like, hey, uh, she, I, I'm winning this game of checkers because she's no good because she can't concentrate. And the doctor's working up a delta wave form thing for her. He, he's using the sonic screwdriver. And a few as, other bits yeah. and pieces. And, and Adric says, well, what if we need the sonic screwdriver? And the doctor's like, why would we need the sonic screwdriver? Look at this paradise. And the viewers are like, you're definitely going to need the sonic screwdriver. <laughs> and he never needed the sonic screwdriver. Well, at least not obviously, yeah. But, so anyway, Nissa gets sent to the TARDIS to sleep for a couple days. Because it's going to take 48 hours, supposedly, for this Delta Wave thing to clear up her mind mm -hmm. after fainting. And we do not see her again for the entirety of the serial until the very, very, very end. Or the sonic screwdriver. Right. She goes on, uh, the actress, I guess, went on holiday. She went to France or Spain or somewhere, but she was not around for this. But that's fine. Everybody needs a holiday. Um, and that's Nissa out of the picture for the whole thing. Uh -huh. That's the end of her story arc. Well, for this serial. Um, all of the current companions leave during this doctor. Davidson? Yes. So, Adric... Well, he gets like a whole new list of companions, right? That's pretty common. Well, yes. Doctors will Yeah, very, very common, generally speaking. Go through more um, companions. Yeah, all of these companions leave during this doctor, and he goes because to... Because they all started with Baker anyway, right? Yes. So we they don't all have start any Baker. uniquely Davidson companions yet. Not yet. Turlo will be one of those. Turlo. Turlo. And Chameleon. 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 And then eventually uh, Perry, but Perry will carry on to the Sixth Doctor. Perry will carry. Perry Gillian. Like Gilligan's Island. No, Gillian. Perry Gillian, one word. But one Perry word. for short, yeah. Perry Gillian, one word, Perry for short. But she will continue on into the next Doctor. So is Gillian Island short for Perry Gillian? No. I Gilligan's think. Island. Yeah, the TV show. Yeah. From the book. What book? I don't know. <laughs> Treasure Planet? was the name of the... Treasure Island was the book. <laughs> Gilligan's Island was the show. Yeah, you haven't had enough to drink if you're making that much sense. So, <laughs> all right. That makes so, sense, right? N barely. All right. <laughs> it's too much for that at this point. All right. So anyway, Nissa goes and um, she's gone for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So Adric and the Doctor and Tegan are walking around and they run into this field of chimes. Mm -hmm. These gorgeous, beautiful, just large, like organ style set of chimes. Annoying. Yeah. And, and they and Doctor plays notes on it and stuff, but that's cool. Um it would have been less annoying if they're good at playing notes on the chimes. True. Um but the doctor it's plays a little bit of three blind mice on it. Attempts to. I mean he he does like nine notes of it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Well, in in reality, it's it's you know on set it sounded like this, and they added in the sound effects with audio engineering. But they we, didn't do a good job. <laughs> we have to go by what's on screen, not <laughs> not not not, not what the they sound. did that we didn't see on production. It didn't sound good. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, probably so, is is my least enjoyable. <laughs> oh, the chimes. Yeah, I have the most favorite moment. All right, so Tegan... And the chimes is my least favorite moment. All right, what's your most favorite moment? Well, I'd say the chimes are tied with the snake. At the end? Yeah, that's my least favorite. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that ending is uh, leaves something to be desired, which is why it's, <laughs> ca this serial kind of gets a bad rap. But it kind of deserves it and kind of doesn't. I think it's... 
I think it's better than the the reputation. The the writing was there. It was more like a budgetary visual effects thing. The, yes, the set pieces yes. really didn't bring it. But the writing right. was decent. This is the beginning of the end of the production values. You know, mm-hmm. like I said, this this was it. Start well, actually starting a little bit last season, but in eighty one, but definitely here in eighty two, it's just going downhill. Yeah. Um, I feel like the writers are still, you know, decent. Yeah, yeah they're, they're they're saying, well, what can we do with the budget we have? And then they found out that they couldn't do that. It's gonna get worse before it gets better. <laughs> okay. Uh, so anyway, no sonic screwdriver, no Nissa, um, but Tegan falls asleep under these chimes. And she winds up in... She trips balls. Yeah. <laughs> the acid kicks in. She is in some weird Alice in wonderland kind of weird... The darkness within place. Yeah, everything is sort of monotoned and inverted. And... Yeah. All right. and, and this goes on for a couple of Dream episodes. Escape. Yeah, she runs like, into people playing. Like, Adric runs triggers. off... The doctor follows Adric. Mm-hmm. Tegan's left there to her own devices, sleeping under these yeah. chimes. She's she's in the darkness of the within or whatever, mm-hmm. and yeah. Uh, in the meantime, we're introduced to the crew of the dome. Colonel Sanders. Do you think he's a colonel? I, I don't Sanders. think he was a colonel. I'm gonna call him Colonel Sanders. <laughs> I'm assuming he was a colonel. Back to space balls, With right? the name, like yeah. Sanders. Sanders. Like, uh, um, we have medical officer, or no, scientist Todd. Can Frucky Fred Chicken? Yeah. Was he in Spaceballs? Colonel Sanders was a character in Spaceballs. Oh. The new one? Did you see the new one? No, there's just I the old one. I haven't seen the new one. No, I think the History of the World Part 2, but I don't think they've done new Spaceballs yet. Oh, I was getting space balls. Um, what, what am I thinking of? The basketball one. White men can't jump. No. Oh, they are doing a second. Yes, one. they are exactly. doing a remake of White. I just jump. saw that. I like the first one. I never seen either of them. You haven't seen the first one with uh, no. uh, Woody Harrelson. I like Woody Harrelson. Yeah, that's pretty I don't good. like him enough to watch a basketball. Space one. Jam is what I'm thinking of. Oh, Space, Space Jam. Jam one and two. Yeah, there's uh, two of them. I saw okay. the first one. I haven't seen the second. I didn't remember Colonel Sanders being. <laughs> no, <laughs> Space he Jam. was in Space Ball. I don't think I've ever seen Space Balls. Is it good? It's bad. Put it on the list. It's terrible, right? What do you mean? What the? Okay, you've never seen Space Balls. I think it's free on YouTube. You've never seen Space Balls. I've seen bits and pieces of. It. I've never sat down and watched. Okay, it. I don't know where your movie list is. Um, but put it on the movie list. I haven't seen Colonel Sanders. I did see the part where they have the giant comb and they're combing the desert. <laughs> well, you ain't found shit. <laughs> All right, put space balls on the list. I the, cannot believe um, you seen that. The Darth Vader parodies played by the guy from Little Shop of Horrors. Rick Moranis. Yeah. Yes, and it's a uh, dark helmet. Dark helmet. <laughs> yes. When is now? Now is now. What? This is now. Well, can we go back to then? No, that's already passed. What? When? Just now. Is that a Doctor Who quote? No, I'm quoting Spaceballs. It could be a Doctor Who quote. All right, Spaceballs on the list. Gattaca's on here, we never watched that. Uh, there are several movies on there we need to watch, and we do actually have a list of heroes and villains to do. Yeah, we're, we're, we're building back up. Yeah, so we're actually building a list again. Well, half of these we, okay, so the fifth doctor's not on that list yet, but right. we need to add him. But we've got like four we can do that are gone. But like Adric, Nissa, and Tegan are still in the show. You know, I just, I just want to see the Black Guardian again. He's coming. I feel like that's kind of a half-baked story arc to do an episode on. He's coming okay. during this Doctor. Oh, yeah. all right, right, wait, wait. So Ad- we might want to see him again before we do that episode. All right, okay. So ask me if Amara come back again. Does, does, um... See, now that you told me to do it, I kind of want... Does the mark come back again? During this doctor, yes. What? Yes. See, only one time during this doctor. Did that feel organic? No, that felt great. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was natural. <laughs> it, was, it was as organic as it was going to be, you know? Alright. Oh, that's cool. So it's a 
specifically a Davidson villain recurring villain. Yes, it, it has not come back since then hmm. in the entirety of the show. It comes back, it comes twice during Davidson. Oh. But it's recurring, so we'll have an episode on it, right? Isn't that like... Technically, a, you're correct, yes. We should put them all like up the there. That's the only qualification. <laughs> it is, a, a, at least in two serials, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. And then we do the one-shot villain per Doctor. Yeah, we, we could, even with that really low standard, we, we ran out. So it's like, let's, let's do our favorite one-shots anyway. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, so anyway. Uh, in the meantime, we're being shown in the dome, quote-unquote, Mm -hmm. uh, we're being shown Sanders and uh, Hilson, what's his name? Balls with the W, B A W L C. Space Balls. What was the question? <laughs> okay, the name of the security officer. Uh, Hindle. Hindle. We have, um, we have Sanders, Hindle, and Todd. Yeah. Todd is a female scientist. Um, you, you assume slash medical officer, but that doesn't come up. Um, Hindle is the security SR. Mm -hmm. I don't know what SR stands for, but he's a security SR. Senior recruit? I don't know. Security, security. Reconnaissance? I don't know. But he's the SR security. And then the guy in command is Sanders. And Correct. that's it. Those three. We, we've heard of Roberts, but he's gone missing. And then we've heard of others before him, although they're not right. named. But they've gone so. missing. Uh -huh. But there's only three in this dome. Um, Alright, so... Alright. Todd is a female middle-aged scientist. Pretty good and competent. Uh, Hindle is about 30, and he's going crazy, like nuts, like cheese slid off his cracker gone. He spins the actor does a great job during oh, the course so of the serial yeah. of being a madman, of he just going insane. It's he great. Really sells it. Yeah, he, he I, does really sell it. I really liked his actor. I really like Sanders' actor. Yep, yep. I really like Todd's actress, but but I feel like even though she was really good, she's probably my least favorite of the Well, because they're, they're, just they're really all really, really good. She, she she plays a straight man. She, yeah, she was yeah. the most boring character. Even right. though she, she did a good job, the others were just so interesting. So far out there. Right. <laughs> um, and then uh, Sanders is the... I am the very model of a modern major general, right? I, so I am fun. the man... And he, he's like 55, 60... And he's doing all these push-ups, and it's running in place, and he, the man's fit. Something, something mineral. I'm the very model of a modern major general. Uh, it's something, something, something animal and mineral. mineral. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll probably get flagged for that. All right. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. The tune might catch it. Alright, anyway, so... Um, well, that would be a, a cover. That's under... What do you call it? Cover license? Uh, or, we'll go with satire. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, although, to be fair, it, it wasn't exactly satire. You need to purchase a uh, license for... Uh... Wait, no you don't. We did like two bars of it. That's fair use, <laughs> you know? That is under fair use. Alright, so... I'm gonna go in and report the video. <laughs> Alright, so anyway, um, Sanders is very much the... Uh, the older, say, 60-ish man's man. I, I've also been going in and reporting every time I see your feet in the podcast. Oh. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Look, big feet. They put a warning under the video. <laughs> well, that's Twitch. We're not on really on Twitch. Some stunts are dangerous. <laughs> Oh, look at my horrible feet. All right. Do you, you ever think about getting those um, shoes with the toes? The toe shoes. You, have you seen those? I've seen those, and no, no, not 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 appealing. Not particularly interested. No. I mean, it'd be interesting to try. You don't think you like them? I don't know. I don't. I'm not willing to pay two hundred bucks to find they out. They cost two hundred dollars. I have no idea. Oh. I'm just guessing because they seem so exotic. <laughs> they do seem exotic. Is as exotic as Golden Barefoot. 
No, going barefoot is pretty natural. I have to have socks on because my feet get cold. Because your feet what? You're not a socks person. You don't like socks. Well, if I'm going to take on my shoes, they, I'm going to They come off with the shoes, yeah. Pretty much. But they're so comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway. So episode three. No. Where are we? We're in episode one. Oh, still? Yes. All right. So what happens? All right. Anyway. Tegan's tripping balls. <laughs> Tegan's in the in the uh, Wonderland. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Blunderland, whatever. Mm -hmm. She's in this other place, and there's these weird, freaky people with the white faces, like, like, like. Not normal white, but like like pale, ghastly, I've got way too much makeup on white. Painted, yeah. And they're like, we don't know you. You're a figment of our imagination while they play some weird tri-color game. And then... And they're playing 3D chess, 4D chess. Uh, just like a three-player kind of weird chess, chess game. <laughs> um, and then she bumps into this one guy and he's like, oh. She's like, are you going to tell me I'm imaginary? He's like, no. But I will convince you that you will let me go through you into the world. And she's like, no. And this goes on for an so episode and a half just coming in and out, you know? That character has a name. But I don't know why. It's not... That is the Mara, but his name is not the Mara. Did you catch his name in the subtitles? They call him Duca. Mm-hmm. But why? Who's Duca? That's just the name of that character. They just gave the the character who's the same character as the Mara. No, 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 no. The Mara is the race. Duca is that character. Oh, Duca's the snake, and then the Mara. Uh, okay. No, Duca's that particular Mara. All Duca's and the Mara are, are there. Maras, but not all Maras are Duca's. Yes, but why would you phrase it that way? <laughs> Your circles. The circle's inside of that circle with this. Alright, anyway, so... Alright. <laughs> Duke of the Mara. Okay, so anyway, we're getting way ahead of ourselves <laughs> in the next episode. Um, but eventually, after a whole bunch of mind... Screwing. <laughs> um, Dewey gets... I didn't know you spoke sign language. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Do you know the sign language for, um... How about I show you a, a sign language and, and you guess what it means. What is it? Okay, so here's the first one. Do you know what this means? Milk on your cow. Uh, milk, right, yeah. Yeah. Do you, okay, but do you know what this means? Pasteurized milk. Ah! <laughs> Alright, last one. <laughs> do you know what that means? Bukaki. <laughs> That's the thank you. That's the <laughs> Can you imagine being an interpreter? And for whatever reason, the president says Bukaki and you have to do this. <laughs> Texas Renaissance Festival. I've seen a, uh, I've you seen a it. live um, um, sign language interpreter at ASL weekend have to do that. That's yeah. why I know I, 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 they did that for like a stand-up comedian. That's the only reason why I know that ASL <laughs> I don't know, enough ASL to <laughs> speak Bukaki. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope my mother never sees this. Right. She never will. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm open minded. <laughs> my mother is much less likely to see this than yours. My mother's almost 80. <laughs> How old's your mother? 67. No, she's 67. getting there too. Mm. Anyway, she just added me on something. Facebook? Instagram. I think she just made an Instagram. <laughs> Alright, so anyway. Um, <laughs> That's like, you know, being young and hip and you're at the club and then your mother's like, hey, check, check out these shots. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing here, mom? <laughs> I don't know you knew about this place. <laughs> She's like, I hear this is where all the cool kids hang out. <laughs> <laughs> It's like that 80 for Brady's yeah, women, you know? It's yeah. like, just, just hang it up, okay? Just... Mm. Mm. Although I might be 80 by the time we finish Dr. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, so anyway, uh, Adric and the doctor are walking through the f uh, forest, 
and they run into this automated robot thing. Is this episode two yet? No, one. Adric closes the automated robot thing, mm -hmm. and then it continues along its journey, pushing him and the doctor into the dome. Do you remember what the robot was named? Uh, TRR or something? S SSR. SSR. Which is funny because the security guy's SR. So you think those uh, two titles might be related? Theoretically possible. I don't know. Security robot. Security SR. So SSR. So the robot pushes them into the dome, and uh, Nissa's in the TARDIS. Tegan's under the the chimes, mm -hmm. and the Doctor and Adric end up in the dome, and he they're greeted by uh, Sanders, uh, Todd, and what's his name? Hilgen. Hinder. Hinder. And they're holding the. Oh, Hinder's got a gun. And doctors. Is that a gun? It looks yeah. like the, uh, you know, the bubble machines. The. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hinder, Hinder's got a, a gun, and uh, the doctor's like, look, it is in normally British fashion. He's like, look, hey, um, she can give us a benefit of the doubt until we prove ourselves hostile. We're just friendly. We're just good, and we just happen to be here, and um, Hinder. Is all super crazy paranoid. Yeah. But um Robert's gone missing. He's Robert's like, gone missing. Yeah, this guy's gone missing. But um Sanders is like, sure, yes, yes. You're hungry, we'll feed you. Um, because the doctor asked for breakfast because Adric's hungry. And they go to the mess the main bridge mm -hmm. and Adric's like mom 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 and Doctor like What what do you think they fed him? I don't know, some sort of protein based something. It was weird and pink. My bet's strawberry ice cream. Sure, and it may be for the show, yeah. Well, that's what it looks like, though. It does, but it, it's, it's some sort of futuristic, decent food. No, someone shows up at your dome, they're like, hey, I'm hungry. What do you give them? I don't have strawberry ice cream. Strawberry ice cream? I don't have strawberry ice cream. Well, you don't have a dome either, but if you had a <laughs> dome, I'm assuming you'd have strawberry ice cream. All right, Adric goes to town the food. Um, the doctor trades plates with Adric, and Adric keeps going to town on doctor's food. Uh, what do you think the significance of that scene was? Or were they trying to communicate? That Adric is a growing young boy and he was hungry, and the doctor has the capability to eat less when he wants to. But Adric doesn't? No, he's a growing young boy, and he's human-esque, and he's not a time lord. Well, the doctor is growing. No, he's not. Well, he has a very uh, advanced metabolism, and he regenerates. Right, but like, like, like most growing. adults, they can skip a meal or three when they need to, you know? Like a snake regenerates its tail. Yeah, no. We're not he's even... growing a tail, right? He needs... Same thing. Yeah, no. All right. All right. Okay. Would you skip a meal for me? Hell yeah. Really? Yeah. That is not the answer I was expecting. I missed like <laughs> 10 meals for you. Oh, I'm so If flattered. it was me or you, oh. you. <laughs> Seriously. You would you would give me your strawberry ice cream? Yeah. That's it's the greatest thing a man can do. He can give his life for his brother, you know, for his neighbor. That's the sweetest thing I was not expecting. <laughs> I'm glad I could surprise you. <laughs> Alright. Um, episode 2? Wait, where's the end of episode 1? Episode 1 ends with um, they kind of have guns, is what I wrote down. They kind of have guns. Yeah, they kind of have guns. Okay, so that's after the, the mirror. mirror. And then he gives them guns. And Sander gets in the SSR. Alright, so you find out that there's <laughs> two kinda, not kinda, kinda <laughs> natives in a cell inside the dome. Yeah, the, uh, Sander says this is standard procedure, is just abducting these people. It's, and it's Todd, the doctor, Dr. Todd's not happy about it. She's right, like, right. well, it's standard procedure for us, but for them it's very traumatizing. Correct, correct. Uh, scientist Todd lady does not like it. Mm -hmm. um, but towards the end, 
Hilden? What's his name? Hilgen? Hinder? Hinder. Hind- oh. Hindel. Hindel. Hindel figures out that the mirror kind of captures her essence and they speak telepathically and so there's some telepathy there and Hinder captures that in the mirror mm-hmm. and he gets the kinder to follow him and do you know that's um based off of early interactions with tribal people and the british empire and tribal people didn't like mirrors and then later on they also didn't like their pictures being taken because they were mm. very superstitious and they thought that was capturing like an es- a part of their soul. soul yeah so they're like don't mm. take my picture yeah and don't yeah. give me a mirror <laughs> Yeah. So they, it says, so they kind of use that. Well, the show is incredibly right? British, and, and uh, Sanders is incredibly British. So here are these kind of tribal, unscientifically advanced, scientifically advanced group of savages, <laughs> or tribal people, um, and 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 yeah, they're superstitious. So they see the mirror, and they and they are enthralled by it, and and Hindel, um, sort of, yeah, he latches onto that, and, hmm. and he's also going crazy at this right. point. That's not the end of the episode. The end of the episode, um... Alright, so Adric and the Doctor are in the dome, uh, with Sanders, Todd, and Hindle, and Sanders decides he needs to go out in the, 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 the mechanized robot yeah. to go check out everything with the other people who had never returned. Yeah. And he does that, and in the meantime, this is a very fast-moving serial. It should, it feels like it could have been five or six episodes. There's a lot it goes at a clip, and there are bits that are left out, like how they wind up at that place in the first place. Um, th- there are bits that seem to be edited out to make it up for the time. Yeah, a lot of overarching the story lines, stuff that gets yeah. left out. Um, and so anyway... Uh, Sanders goes out in the robot, mm-hmm. and he leaves Hindle in charge. Hindle has flipped his lid. The cracker, you know, the cheese is slid off the cracker. He's just gone, and he's like, he comes in after Sanders leaves. He's like, you are under arrest. And the doctor and uh, the lady Todd are like, yeah. why? He's like, I don't trust you. I've never trusted you. And then comes around the corner, the Kenda, which are controlled by Hindel, mm-hmm. and he goes, she says, you have no power to arrest us. She says, yes, I'm in command. I control you, the power of life and death over you. End of episode, episode one. one. Yep. So the doctor and, and Dr. Todd were in her study, and they're in episode apples. two. They're eating apples, and, and the doctor's like, it's, you're not... Well, that's so, earlier. Yeah, yeah. Did we talk about this yet? Well, it's a minor scene, but yeah, they're eating apples, and and, and they and they, comes in. Yeah, they they let, they have the gate open to the tribal people, and they're eating apples, and the uh, security officer, Hindle, comes in, and he doesn't like that they're eating the planet produce, because that's... Indigenous against, fruit. And he doesn't like... <clears throat> that they have the cage open, so he's, he he loses his temper and he he orders them out and he throws pots and plants around and flips a chair. He's chairs. really upset. Yeah. yeah, this is just before he discovers the connection. So that's when he, yeah he gets the mirror. So they they go to talk to Sanders like he ordered them to because they're eating produce. And Sanders is like, I'm gonna hang on this robot. I'm gonna go for a stroll. I'm gonna yeah. take a couple of days. Um, you know, this should be waking up by the time I get back. Uh, <clears throat> and he said, Well, I'm, I'm gonna leave Hindle in, in charge. And they said, I don't know if that's a good idea. He, he seems to kind of be a little stressed out. Oh, he's this like, rocker. So I'll give him some authority. We'll totally snap him back into shape, right? Yeah, th- this guy's logic is not good. Like, like, shouldn't you think about this again? I never think twice about anything. It wastes time. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you're in charge, and he's like, yes, sir, and he leaves, and he, all right, since I'm in oh, charge, you're yeah. under <laughs> Oh. So episode two starts <clears throat> with Adric 
<clears throat> and not Tegan, the doctor, and Todd being thrown into a prison cell. Right. And the doctor doesn't understand how sleight of hand works, even though he's used sleight of hand yeah. several, several times. Yeah, don't point that out. Yeah. What is that all about? <laughs> he's a new doctor. What he's they, a very new doctor. They, they really dumb Davison down. <clears throat> oh, no, they just... Compared they, to previous doctor iterations. You don't know if he's playing the part... Or if he, because he's a new doctor, doesn't gen, you know, does not genuinely doesn't remember. Know. Yeah, slight of hand. You don't know. Regenerating sounds like a pain if you just. It's a pain in the ass. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, eventually they get. Oh, All right. So Adric's like. It's easy. Choose a hand. It's easy. It's super, you can see it, right? It's sticking out of the... <laughs> picked the wrong hand. Alright. So would you pick the left hand? <laughs> <laughs> so, Adric and the Doctor are playing the game with a coin where Adric does a sleight of hand with the coin that makes it appear in the Doctor's ear and, you know, the whole stick. And the Doctor's are like, ooh, you have amazing <laughs> abilities I didn't know about. Um, <laughs> So stupid. <laughs> oh my gosh! You need another. You need one more of those. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Where is it? This is not a difficult story, but it's gonna be a long podcast. Oh. And then what happened? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> don't don't you start. Don't you start. We haven't even talked about slim shape. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. There's there's a scene in in the, in the nether world or whatever it is, the other world, the the Wonderland world, where the guy's like it looks like um what's his name? Eminem. Eminem. Okay. And uh, and he's like laying on the ground and and he's uh, yeah and and he. And you were like, he, he's the real Slim Shady. I said, well, will the real Slim Shady, shady please stand up? Right, right, right. And he stood up. It was right, so right, right. funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that was Ducka. We did talk about him. Huh? Ducka, yeah. yeah, yeah. We talked about him. There's, there's all that, that <laughs> insane crap. <laughs> this is such a weird it's, cereal. It's, so, it's, it's so bad and it's so good all at the same time, but it's so weird. It was super, sorry, very, yeah, Wheel of Time. It's very esoteric. esoteric. Yeah, less sci-fi, more... Wait, we haven't got to the part where it explains the Wheel of Time stuff, or the Dune stuff. Yeah, good luck with that. So, <laughs> so it flashes away from them playing sleight of hand in their jail cell to, um, back to Tegan and her... Well, she does all that hand. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to skip a whole bunch of the... Other world crap. Oh, good. It's, it's just I didn't understand. <laughs> so there's like That's four really stories good. going on here. There's a there's a story of the insane Hilgen or Hilden or whatever his name is. Hindle. Hindle. The insane Hindle and the people on the base. There's a story of the Kinda and their weird um, society. There's a story of the other world which is going on with the the maga wait not maga what do you call mara yeah the weird mara and all that stuff what does and maga mean make america great again oh. all right and there's the story of the doctor and his companions and all this stuff is so weirdly interweaved interwoven <laughs> what where did that act <laughs> make america great again Make America Great Again. I was talking to, uh, have you heard about ChatGPT? The what? Uh, artificial intelligence? Oh, AI? Yeah, uh, no. Have you talked to any yet? No, no, oh, we, that uh, is so freaking creepy. So we're, I would like to have a conversation with you, me, and ChatGPT. No. <laughs> no. And we'll film it. No, that is so creepy. <laughs> 
That's so freaking cool. Well, you can't escape it because everyone's implementing this this artificial intelligence. Like oh, Google God. is putting it in their search engine, and Edge is putting it in their search engine, and Snapchat has one. <laughs> Every social media. I'm not on social media, thank the Lord. None of them? No. Oh. No. How do you keep up with people? I don't freaking care. How do you how are you gonna look at my vacation pictures? I don't wanna look at your vacation pictures. I need that validation. You validate yourself, okay? okay? God will validate you. I don't need to validate you. Until your mother adds you on Instagram. My mother's not on Instagram. My mother's almost (laughs) eighty. Here, I'll take some ice, please. I thought, and that's what I thought. And you get a beer. Or another and red she showed up. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, alright. And then what happened? <clears throat> Episode f- five? No, there's only four episodes. Oh. Okay. Doctor and uh, scientist Todd are kept in the uh, cell. Andrew decides to go along, and he likes where uh, Hilgen or Hilden or whatever his name is is going. He he he. This is the third time he has gone with the bad guys. And said, you know what? I like what you're doing. He did it with the vampires, he did it with the master, and now he's doing it with this guy. So, you know what? I like where you're going. I don't want to go with that. And because he's young and looks innocent and pliable, he's believed. Um, in the meantime, uh, the doctor and the son just started put in the cage. And Adric tries to get a key to get them out of the cage. And then he takes the key and he tries to give it to the doctor the same style as he did with the magic, but he gets caught. And uh, so, unfortunately, what's his name? Hilgen? Hillen? Hinder. Hinder. In, in, in oh Belge. Thank you. Hinder catches him with the key. And he says, Don't you ever try that again. He goes, what, what, what was that? Open your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, he tried that. It didn't work. And I am out of compliments. He has a, a sharp eye that handle. Hmm? He did. Well, he was watching them on video. Must have been like... And he had the, the telekinetic stuff from uh, his kinder. Uh, his kinder. Oh, they telecommunicate with him? Well, yeah, they were watching them when the doctor tried to pass a key back to uh, Dr. Todd, and she didn't take it because one of the kinder was watching it. So anyway, um, in the meantime... I thought you had to open the Pandora's box to... No, we're not there yet. Be... We're not there yet. Was it just the mirror they used to control? How did they use the mirror to give them orders? Because it's part of the tele telepathic bit. The mirror they think captured their soul. We just talked about that. And he was able to communicate with them telepathically after that because they, they crossed eyes. They crossed their eyes? No. Like that? Their eyes met and he was able to control them after that oh. through the mirror. Alright. Anyway. Well, how does that work? I have no idea. Cool. All right. Cross that question off. <laughs> that was a question. <laughs> Wait, uh, do you well, have any questions about episode one? Most of all my questions is, how does that work? <laughs> all Why right. is Nessa bad at checkers? Uh-huh. Because she was, she just fainted a couple of times. Why does the doctor not understand sleight of hand? <laughs> well... He's learning it here. It's part of this. It's part of the plot. Why does Slim Shady provide an existential <laughs> crisis to the top? 
Because he stood up. <laughs> yeah, that's all my questions so far. <laughs> oh, and also, how does that work? Mm. So, anyway, Sanders is in the protective metal suit. It's very uh, Avatar. Yeah. And, Have you um, seen the new Avatar? No. I was in the first Avatar. Really? Yeah. Why? It's crap. It How dances do you know? with Smurfs. How do you know if you haven't seen it? Okay, I don't need to take strychnine to know it's bad. Eventually, you trust enough critics. Take strychnine? Yeah. What's that? It's a poison. Is that like quaaludes? No, it's a different kind of poison. Have you ever had quaaludes? No. Oh, okay. But I trust enough people who say it's bad. Same for strychnine, same for fentanyl, same for methamphetamines. I'm not going to take those. I know no, they're bad. I've never heard of strychnine. Yes, I have. I'll try anything once. You try some of those, you, you won't have a second chance. Except not meth. Not even once. Fentanyl's worse. Oh, well, that's what they make, uh... What do they call it? Drug X? I don't know about drug X. But fentanyl's worse than methamphetamines. Yeah, it's for, um... It's uh, for people overdosing on drugs. Every cop carries it now. Cause of yeah, there's something they shoot in your heart to keep you alive. Well, there's a, a, a adrenaline you shoot into your heart, but they have right. this drug X thing which is supposed to pull you out of a fentanyl overdose. Because cops, they'll be like searching something and they'll open it up and, and the fentanyl will go and then they'll breathe it in and that's enough to kill you. They <laughs> Every single cop car has to have like this, uh, man, I can't. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't know. <clears throat> Episode three? No, we're oh, still on two. Okay. Okay. So anyway, uh, Sanders gets the box. Very Avatar-esque. Right. Right. He's in the... Is that a Renaissance shirt? Yes, actually it is. Is it even close? <laughs> no, that was not even close to where I intended to go. Alright. Do you get one of those every year? No. Huh. Why'd you get that one? Because that year I wanted one. Just that. Why, why did you want one that year, but not every year? Some years I like the pattern design, some years I don't. So and they have like I do not need a t-shirt every year. Like. They I have, have too many t-shirts as it is. They have a set pattern for every year? No, they, they do different things. When are we going to Renaissance Festival? Are you coming this year? Are you going to dress up like, like Merlin? Probably not. Oh, well, but are you coming the, this year? If you're not going to dress up as Merlin, what's the point? I go every year. And you never dress up? No, I used to dress up. I don't dress up now. Why? I'm Which past one? the point of dressing up. <laughs> you know how uh, it's fun? No, I used to dress up. Okay, Cause I didn't fun. dress up, then I dressed up, then I'm not dressing up. But I may dress up again. Well, whenever you dress up, I'll go that year. Your brother's been. Yeah, but he didn't dress up, so I didn't go. So, you don't want to come? If you dress up, I'll go. Promise? When is it? <laughs> <laughs> Do you promise if I dress up, you will go? If I have the means to, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, have a, I'll, be, I'll, I'll have started my new job. Ooh, we'll drink on that. Is it like October? October 13th, 14th, and 15th this year. I can probably do that. Mm. But what are you going to dress up? <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. At this point. <laughs> I am three sheets to the wind. I want to be more, but you know. All right. How anyway, many sheets are there? Can you throw to the wind? We're running on three right now. Is that is this like a measurement system? No, it's it's an expression. It means you're pretty darn drunk. But why three sheets? Because this is how many sails the old. Long, tall ships used to have oh. three sheets. Oh, I get it. Okay. Full on ahead. 
You're full throttle. Exactly. Where the hell were we? <laughs> uh, I think we were in episode three. No, I think we're in episode two. So Sanders is walking in his robot suit. Oh, and then uh, so he gets approached by an Pana old wise woman and Karana, Pan of the old woman, and she and Pana she looks like Pana seventy years old. Pandora's box. Yeah, and uh, Karana is like like sixteen, like old woman, young woman, and um, they hand him the box. It's this little wooden box. You need more beer? You want some, uh, crown? No, the, uh, I'll take a couple of shots of the whiskey, peanut butter jelly whiskey. Thank you. Why is he leaving? Okay. Anyway, so, God, this is going to be a long episode. All right, so, they give the box to Sanders, even though um, the young lady is like, no, men can't handle this. The old lady is like, well, we have to try. And you seem to understand, it's implied, that the other three men who had gone through here were given the box but just couldn't handle it. They, they, they could not handle the enlightenment at all and burn out their brains. But they give the box to the same, this new male because apparently it works on females and they can understand and handle it, but males cannot. And they give the box to this male, but he, he survives. He survives the enlightenment. And that's literally what the box gives, is enlightenment. He's, I wouldn't say reduced to a child, but he is somewhat reduced to a child. He is, he is brought forward or backward, as you choose, to a simpler form, a more simple form and then he goes and he can use a head back with the box to the dome in the meantime not holden hilden whatever his name is indel is going off his rocker and it's going to Determine everyone in there is problematic and especially uh, Adric. He's just about to sense on Adric. And what do you know? Sender shows up in the, uh, the, the robot thing and he goes, Hey, I'm here. And oh my gosh, Hindel. His cheese completely slips off his cracker. And he's like, mother, mother, mummy, mummy, make him go away. Mummy, ah, uh, mummy, make him go away. I don't understand because no one else had left to come back. And because he was that like friggin' nuts, like Kindle is nuts at this point. Completely gone. So, Hindle is faced with the prospects of Sanders. Sanders says, like, hey, he is smiling for a change. He's like, I got this box. I brought this box for you. I'll give you this box. And Hindle's like, what? No. So he eventually forces the doctor, Todd, and Sanders, who is so complacent at this point, willing to do whatever and they all go into the cage and Hindle is willing to shoot them to get the box open but he doesn't want to open the box himself and so right at the end of episode two under the threat of being executed the doctor opens the box and uh, Sun just tells like no and 
the box is opened. Turns out in the box, episode three, just a big of a Jack O' Lantern jumps out, Jack in the box. And then the doctor and scientist Todd look in the box and it's like, oh, mom, mom, mom. And there are their countenances, countenances, are changed. Same way Sanders' countenance was changed. He's now so amazingly conciliatory. The doctor's changed, but not as much because he's a time lord. And Taz has changed, but not as drastically because she's a female. So they come out of there and they're like, we escape from this place. So they run and run and run and run and they get out of the base. Housekeeping. Oh, there you go. I found them. Do they taste like peanut butter and jelly? It's kind of bad, actually. But it's kind of good. Here, I'll give you a it sip. It sounds interesting. No, take a sip. Take a sip. Take a sip. Episode three? Yeah, we're on episode hey. three. Take a sip. Take a sip. It smells peanut butter. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> like I said, it's not good. Well, that's different. Yeah. <laughs> I tasted jelly, peanut butter, and alcohol in three different parts. <laughs> not good. It doesn't blend well. Alright, so, anyway. Um, so the doctor and uh, scientist Todd saw this vision of the young girl, the mm -hmm. old woman, the cave, and all mm -hmm. the kinda. Mm -hmm. And they said to go out and find them. And in the meantime, like literally the cage door had opened, they let them out, they all run out, they go out into the woods, and they're looking for... It was because the power was surging because of the box, and that's why the cage yes. opened? Yeah. Yes. And they go out and they run and they look into the woods. Um, in the meantime, we're finally back That's, to Tegan. That sticks with you. Oh, this? Yeah. <laughs> Tegan, um, I passed along her, her kinda her snake, snake thing to, to Eris. Eris. Yeah. Yeah. And he, Tegan had the, the red teeth and the red eyes. The, and now it's Eris who has the red teeth and the red eyes. Yeah, and Tegan's back asleep under because she had one of the week off. Because mm -hmm. everyone was with these weeks <laughs> Yeah, off. she was out for that episode. She's, alright, uh, Nissa's out for three episodes. She's out for like two episodes. And, um, anyway, mm -hmm. so Eris is running around like, I have voice. Because apparently among the kin kinda, yeah. Only those who are have wisdom have voice, and the wisdom people are mostly female. They're only male it's, if they are prophesied. Yeah, it's very Dune, where yeah, only the the first male that's gonna have to have the voice is some prophesied person to come. But usually, only only the the matriarchy can talk, and then all the males. Are kind of like the laborers, and and they they communicate, you know, just real basic the emotions. Drones. Yeah. Through yeah yeah they're they're, they're worker drones. Yeah. Um, funny enough, did you know that the actors were paid by per line of dialogue? So they saved a lot of money just saying, okay, so you don't talk. <laughs> That's well, yeah, like the, like the poor um, jester who it and. Yeah. Jumped around, did nothing. Well, they they pay them per dialogue line, right? Per voice line. So all those the the male actors they didn't have to pay because they didn't have any lines. So they save money. Yeah, that sucks. But yeah. <laughs> okay. So anyway, did you? <laughs> this is much longer the episode, but did you know the voice actor that did Roadrunner? Only only said one meep. They only yes. paid them for one week. Yes. And they and doubled they do it up on me. It's a Simpsons joke. <laughs> yes. Because it's true. It's true. Is that really true? Yes. That's not a true story, is it? Yes. 
<laughs> Peter does say meat. To the, to the best of my knowledge. I will, I will, I will augment it to the best no. of my knowledge. I thought that was the most clever Simpsons joke ever. <laughs> Those cheap bastards. They paid me for one meep and doubled it up on the record. Alright, episode three. Year ago. Oh my gosh. Alright, gonna be so, here all night. The, the camera may run out. So, episode three ends with um, them thinking that Panna's dead, right? Because. And you, you've got a bunch of episode three to go through. Oh, we're still in episode three? Yes. Oh, uh, I thought. Where are we at in episode three? Towards the beginning, Tripping. thank you very much. Okay, so so Eris has the voice now. Um, yes. Davison is dumb. <laughs> He's an idiot. He's not dumb. He's an idiot. So they're they're working their way through the woods after they escape prison with the gate open, right? So he uh, and um, Todd are, are are walking through the woods, and he goes, "I." Todd goes, "I think someone's following us," and the doctor says, "Nonsense! Nonsense!" And then, and then in his classic doctor way, he takes two more steps and goes, Hey, I think someone's following us. <laughs> and, and Todd, just the face form. Um, so it ends, uh, ends up, Todd was right. They were being followed by <clears throat> uh, Eris, specifically. And Eris was, I guess, following, because Eris wasn't really Eris. Eris was being mind-controlled by Mara. So I guess he didn't know where the tribe's people were. So he needed to follow the doctor and Todd back to the tribe, uh, the cave area where where their spiritual leader Panna lives, the blind lady. <clears throat> Who, by the way, great casting choice. I love the the actress that played Panna. She was very. I don't know uh, how to explain it. She's very intense. A lot of gravitas in her line delivery. It was fun. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, Eris is following the doctor and Todd to the cave with the wise woman because they know where the cave is because they opened Pandora's rock box, right? Or they call it a uh, box of Dona, Donna, box of Donna. They opened the, the, the box so they received enlightenment and visions of, of the rest of the, they're linked, right, with the, with the tribe now. Um, Mentally, so he, he saw the cave entrance and they're wandering through the woods looking for the vision of the cave that they saw And that's why Eris is following them so he can find out the the cave entrance also <clears throat> um, So so the they figure out that the, they're being followed by Eris um, And then they, they show up at the uh, mouth cave and it's very dramatic and Panna is like the wheel is turning and Hatter said that this episode came out before they wrote the Wheel of Time which is crazy because it's like so accurate to the plot line of the Wheel of Time I guess this was maybe a fantasy trope beforehand because it just it's almost verbatim like beat for beat and she's talking about the, the wheel of time ends and begins and this is the ending and the beginning and life is death and death is life and 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 Panna um, you know the, the every the, this this serial is so weird because all the visuals and you don't know what's reality and it looks like when Tegan was dreaming right because that wasn't real and they're using a, it's the same sort of visual effects like when they open the box but it is real so they're not dreaming so it's reality but you don't really know how to interpret that as the viewer because there's, there's this kind of inconsistency with the the visual medium uh and the filters that you're using so anyway they say um oh, she's dead uh she's dead and the doctor goes oh, i'm not sure if she's dead or not that's the end of episode three so the beginning of episode four the doctor's feeling your pulse and he goes um, in, in, in situations, it is possible that someone slows down their heartbeat and, and rhythm to where they're, you know, practically undetectable and they're still alive. And then he said, but in this case, no, she's dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why he said all of that. <laughs> it's just sitting there taking your pulse. He's like, you know, she could still be alive, but she's not. She's definitely dead. <laughs> So, uh, and then, um, 
Go ahead. The young lady comes back. Yeah. What's her name? Kar- Karana comes. Karana comes back. And she back. goes, silly, she's not dead. She's, I'm right here. And it's like, well, no, it's what more does of, that mean? I, and she takes the staff that Karuna had. Does Karuna mean? was blind. Mm-hmm. Yes. Obviously um, blind. Yes. She had to have uh, Sarana. Uh, yeah, Karana. Karana. Um, look uh, into the uh, eyes of all the other uh, Kani. Um, yeah, the, the eye, eye contact is, is um, <clears throat> paramount to the... the um, Telepathic yeah. translation. So she had to have her look into all of them and voice it for her. You know, right, like, like it. Um, because yeah, they, they communicate telepathically, but in a really dumbed down, kind of simplistic of... Just emotions, mm-hmm. basically. They they say you know obedience, they, they obedience, obedience, telepathically. Obedience. Yeah, they, they they telepathically communicate obedience, fear, intentness. Yeah. So Karana, since she had eyes and she could see, she'd have to look into their eyes and, and communicate what they're telepathically saying. Because emotional, she Karana is blind. Yeah. 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 So anyway, she's dead now, <laughs> and Karana comes around the corner. Our one death. And yes. She, and she and says. Silly, she's not dead. I'm right here. And well, like you she, were her, she took her the staff you, of Karana. Were you here as a kid, and now that the wheel is, and now you're a kid right, again. You're, right. Very the much. Wheel is wheel of time is is turning and turning and turning <laughs> through the ages. So wheel of time. But um, Karana has passed her knowledge and her memories to what's her name? Karana. Panna was the blind one. Panna has passed all of her knowledge, I think. Karana, Karana. very Dunish. Yeah. And we've got the very much Will of time Yes. Yeah. Was that like a fantasy trope? Because he, we're talking about how you said Will of Time was written after this episode of Doctor Who. Yes. But, but it's so like beat for beat, like verbatim with the whole like uh, Wheel of Time story arc. Was that just kind of like a, a well-established uh, kind of... So I don't I know if it was well established before this or not. Because those are they're just strikingly similar how they worded things in the serial mm-hmm. and how like the first book is worded. And this is beginning, the end, and the paramount of reality and the, as I the wheel turns. It's just it's just right out of the book. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know, know if that was like a trope or like a, a thing. It may have come from here. Maybe I it don't came know. from where did that come come from? Is that like some sort of Greek mythology, the whole real thing. I don't know. I have no idea. Fascinating. Yeah. Anyway, um, she dies, passes knowledge to the young girl. One death, technically. The only death in the entire show. So, we, we think. zero deaths last serial, one death a serial, but it will get much larger later on this doctor. This doctor will have a serial with tons of deaths. Sweet. 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 Looking forward to it, I guess. What? <laughs> I don't know. Oh my gosh. Okay. Sounds exciting. So we finally flash back to the least. dome with Adric, right? And um, Sanders and Hendel. And he is progressively Hindle's getting off more his rocker. Unhendled. Gone. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he is so gone. And he plays gone really well. He plays Matt yeah, so, so well. So he's gone like traditionally crazy, whereas Sanders is more like um, this childlike uh, security of, yeah, simpleton. He's, he's, he's had a whatever process, yeah, because the box and some uh, effects male minds. Except for the doctor, because he's a time lord. Correct, correct. But but Hindle is just gone, 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 gone. Yeah, so he, he's wanting to play the holes and, and they're building a miniature set of the, the capital uh, city. A new their, city for yeah. C-14 or whatever the hell And, and Adric keeps, he keeps trying to... Get away. Yeah, yeah, pull away and sneak off. And and, and Hindle's not having any of it. He's like, why, why won't you play with me? <laughs> Eventually he doesn't like, oh, notice though. So eventually Adric gets yeah, away. He take a stroll. Eventually he sneaks away and he finds the SSR, the robot suit. He's like, this is how I'm gonna escape. And Sanders comes and he's like, what, what are you doing? And, and, and 
Sanders is a little bit more reasonable and friendly, whereas Hindle is like unpredictable, unhinged, and dangerous. So, so Adger goes so Sanders. I, I don't, you know, he's. I'm afraid of that guy. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and and Sanders is like, oh, he means well. He just wants to play. It. So he walks him back. But eventually, Adger gets away. We all mean well. And underneath he, it all, he gets in the SSR suit, and he, he's escaping. Meanwhile, in the cave, uh, Eris has totally taken over the tribe, right? right. And and the the rest of the Kinda are, are swearing obedience to it him because been more episodes. It really should have been. More it, it was. It was plot. Thick. It was pretty rushed. That's the end. One. Yeah. So so they're um, because. The, the, the reason why they're sort of er voted to this evil heiress all of a sudden is because they had this prophecy about like the first male that looks in the box Has the and voice. gains the voice and doesn't... Yeah, very Dune. They, they <laughs> can't speak except for the wise woman, but mm -hmm. you know, if a male ever speaks, he's the prophet. He's yeah. the one. So like, this is the guy. So they're following him, even though the only reason he actually has the voice is because he's being... Uh, possessed by Mara, the in, Mara Ducca. Indwalt by the Mara. Yeah, yeah. Indwalt. He's ensorcelled by uh, Ducca. Indwalt. Ensorcelled? This is a good word, but Indwalt's a bit more accurate. He's possessed by Ducca. <laughs> by the Mara. He's giving Ducca a mental <laughs> piggyback ride. And that's why he can talk. by the Mara. <laughs> so. So he goes, this is it, we have to repel the not we, the invaders of our planet, and destroy the dome. So he rallies them all up, and he and he's, he, he starts making some decisions that don't make a lot of sense. He's like, mm -hmm. they have this robot machine, right, that we're afraid of. Right. So we're going to make our own robot out of twigs and sticks. <laughs> and it doesn't work. It does that's not how we're going to work. Oh. But what was he thinking? <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking. It's so bad. He, he waddles up to the dome in this wooden box. They <laughs> just waddle up. Like, they come to him. <laughs> and it's so bad. And the rest of the kind of there, they're just uh, fighting for their lives as this SSR machine's going through and just like throwing people around. It's and so stuff. bad. And, but luckily Todd and um, the doctor show up and he goes, that's... That doesn't look like a very experienced pilot. Oh, that's probably Adric. And, mm -hmm. you know, Adric's struggling with the uh, controls because it just reads your mental input to control it. And right, he has he's obviously to. Yeah, very afraid at the moment, which is why it's just kind of freaking out. So the doctor goes and he, he sort of calms the, the chaos and he talks Adric down and out of the suit yep. and everything's okay. But obviously, um, the kid did. Kinda retreated because <laughs> they were yeah. no match, and and the and then Eris also took off after his little wooden box got shot. <laughs> right, right. What was the point of the box that they built? I had no idea what was the that? point of that box was. <laughs> like it was so bad. It was so bad. It's like it was like one. we can defeat so them. <laughs> I have a wooden box. It to go with your metal box, I mean, just really? Wait, what? Really? No. Is, is the Mara just like stupid or what? <laughs> you would think, yeah. I mean, you're so what bad. What's the point of the plot of this episode? What, were they, what was it trying to achieve? I don't understand. Bad guys are stupid. There's no good guys are smart. That's what they were trying to achieve. I think this is what was, I think this is what I'm struggling with. Is there's no unifying plot. It's, there's a lot of different things going on, and not all of them ever line up. <laughs> to be fair, this serial is like that. It really is. It really is. Okay, so right. so the doctor defeats Samara. Yeah, they get a whole bunch of. You, Mirrors, oh boy, in a circle, and they defeat the Mara. The Mara leaves Aris. He he goes right. back Aris. to his underdwelling. Yeah, right. the name Mara, of the, right. Right. They defeat the, the oh, Mara and Aris. Aris, and there's a giant he snake, a giant paper mache the... snake. Then they eventually defeat it by circling them a whole bunch of mirrors, i.e., solar panels around it, and it eventually dies. And if that doesn't, if that's not crystal clear, I don't know. 
I don't know how else to right. recap that. <laughs> what, are you, what are your other questions? That happened. Uh, <laughs> next time, the visitation, right? Right. Uh, it ends with uh, the doctor saying, Paradise is too green for me. Yeah. Like, he's not tempted to stay there. He wants to keep traveling. What, what does he mean by paradise is too green for me? No clue. Is that like a, the grass is always greener? Like, I, he's not right, content with paradise. Chance, yeah. He has to adventure. He has to keep putting his companion's lives in danger. Kind of, yeah. Um... What's up with Davidson? <laughs> what do you mean? He's so weird. And, and, and dumb and silly. He's so quirky. usually the, the doctor is this character that we can't really relate to because he's this superior alien. intellect. Yeah, this alien. So we have the companions who are kind of dumbed down compared to the doctor who we get things explained to us through the companions, right? Right. But then the doctor took that role and says, you know, the companions are the smart one. I'm the dumb one. I'll explain to the viewers. And he just does dumb things all serial, like like he's wandering through the woods with Todd, and he goes, Todd goes, I think I think we're being followed. He goes, nonsense. And then, and then he goes, I think we're being followed, which is like the classic Doctor Who, I'm smart, I know what's happening. Someone less smart than him goes, this is what happening is happening. He goes, no. And he goes, I have an idea. This is what's happening. <laughs> he says, right. what is this trope with the... It's, it's just a very, very noticeable with Davidson, I particularly. Like I don't like it. But. Right. It, it's kind of like Batman and... Or the Superman problem, right? Superman's cool superhero. No one can be Superman. Mm -hmm. But But then there's no... Um, conflict to that. How do you write a Superman movie? Well, then you have to get the kryptonite, and you have to have this and that to sort of bring him down, and so he has a weakness. But it's like, if you're writing this character to its potential, none of this would happen, and that's what I feel like is always happening with the Doctor. It's like, the Doctor's not dumb. Correct. Next time, the visitation. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, the visualization. I think we covered all my questions. That's about it. Sure. Actors were paid per line. I don't know about that. But yeah. That's a really funny joke. A box of Donna. Um, we look, I don't understand what happened this year. What are you talking about? I don't understand anything. Wait, what are you talking about? What, what, what is the Mara? Why was he there? What was his goal? What is the Wheel of Time, and why was it turning? No, the Wheel of Time is a whole sort of thing. Have you not read the Wheel of Time series? It's the same wheel. <laughs> it's the concept. The the history kind of goes in a cycle and repeats yes. itself. Yes, have you not read the Wheel of Time series? Um, By Robert Jordan. I I don't think I ever made it through the Great Hunt. I've I've read like three movie. out of the what. Three out of fourteen books. Yes, <laughs> about one seventh of the way through. I can't even oh do it on audio book. Oh my god, those are big Dude. books, man. They're like that big. Oh my god, and the prints like that. Oh my god. What? <laughs> They're rough. I'm not a big reader. All you right, read, so you read all of them? Yes, I read all fourteen all books. Of them? Thank you. And that includes the prequel. the prequel, right? Here. And the one prequel. Did you, did you watch the TV show? Did mm. you like the show? The TV show is crap, but I read the books. Oh, uh, why is the show bad? It's it woke. Not, it's so woke. It doesn't hold up to like the source it, it, it material. It keeps doing woke crap. Mm. Anyway. Um. Any other thoughts? Comments? Questions? News. Do you news. have any comments, questions, or news? All my questions. Alright, alright. Um, no news, actually. No news, no Doctor Who news. That's, no Doctor Who that's news. That's the first in a while. I in a while, yeah, yeah. We're waiting on things to happen. Anyway, um, so we are... This is a really strange 
cereal. It was but so strange. It is what it is. We got through it. We got through it. And we will get through more. <laughs> I don't want to get you all in this doctor. And we'll keep this catching up to ribs. the main group, you know? 119. <laughs> Oh, we'll keep giving, we'll keep where's the, where's the main watch group that right there and we're the twin dilemma no right there we're yeah. here we're here in the gap that you just passed so we're like uh to so your left your left your left was that like two seasons two more over Two seasons We're away. right there. The main group is right there. Yeah. How many seasons does Davison have? Three. And you guys are on <clears throat> season three of Davison? No. Season one of uh, Colin Baker. Season one of Colin Baker. Oh, that's the second Baker, right? So you finished right. Davison. Yes. The main watch group? Yeah. I didn't know that. Did you guys have a cake? <clears throat> we actually didn't, unfortunately. <gasps> Is that like the first time ever you didn't have a cake? Yes. Why'd you break the tradition? Where did because the cake our tradition? cake provider was not ready to bake a cake. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your cake provider? <laughs> and what? How did this start? You have a cake every time you start a new time. Like, 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 like it is what it is, you know? Yeah. All right, we'll yeah, see you guys right. um, next week, hopefully, maybe. See you next week? Yep. For, yes, um, that's the plan. The visitation. The visitation. It sounds creepy. Yeah. What is visiting? It is kind of creepy. Visitation of what? Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba.